The cold and desolate streets of Kyiv are subjected to another day of relentless Russian bombing. Ukraine's capital is gripped by fear as the all-too-familiar sound of a Shahed 136 Kamikaze drone whirs overhead like a flying moped. Suddenly, from out of the clouds of dusk and fog engulfing the war-torn city, an armor-clad hero arrives, the Flakpanzer Gepard. Though Gepard means cheetah in German, the Ukrainians have given it an even more ferocious name, the Dragon. Rolling over the debris, this formidable self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, or SPAG, gets in position before letting rip a flurry of 35mm ammunition from its twin Ehrlichan GDF cannons at a devastating combined rate of 1,100 rounds a minute. There's a deafening bang as the Gepard hits its target, and the blackened sky briefly lights up as the drone explodes in a ball of fire. The city breathes a collective sigh of relief. The war drags on, but the dragon brings a glimmer of hope. Since it arrived in Ukraine on July 25th, 2022, this beast has found itself playing a key role in pushing back the advance of Vladimir Putin's invading forces. Originally fielded by the West Germans in the midst of the Cold War to protect Europe from Russian attacks, now, nearly 50 years later, it's proving how effective it is at doing just that. With the dramatic partition of Germany at the end of World War II, those on the democratic western side suddenly found themselves as Europe's front lines of defense against the looming threat of Soviet expansion. As Cold War anxiety continued to build throughout the early 1950s, the newly created West German army, known as the Bundeswehr, received a shipment of M42 duster spags from their American allies, who understood the young country's importance in the fight against communism and were keen to provide military assistance in any way they could. Built by General Motors and entering service in the wake of the Korean War in 1953, the duster used components from the M41 light tank and was armed with twin 40mm M2A1 Beaufort autocannons, as well as a 30 caliber Browning M1919A4 or 7.62mm M60 machine gun, making it a powerful weapon against the enemy aircraft of the day. However, with technological advances changing the face of warfare during the following decade, the duster was no longer as effective as it once had been. The West Germans decided it was time to create an anti-aircraft system of their own. In 1966, two competing projects called the Matador and the 5 PFZA were set underway. After five years of development, the 5 PFZA was eventually declared the winner, and production to test batches began shortly thereafter. Before long, the name was changed to Flakpanzer Gepard. This new SPAG offered several advantages over its predecessor. Thanks to its Leopard 1 tank chassis and track, it featured increased mobility and cross-country capability, including the complete drive unit, with a 37.4-liter 10-cylinder multi-fuel engine with two mechanical superchargers built by MTU Aero engines. The V-engine, featuring a 90-degree cylinder angle, could deliver 610 kilowatts at 2200 RPM and consume around 150 liters per 100 kilometers, depending on factors such as surface conditions and driving style. To ensure consistent oil supply, particularly in challenging terrain and extreme angles, the engine was equipped with a dry sump forced lubrication system, facilitating the use of the weapon system in rocky landscapes, thus making it more versatile in a range of environments. The Gepard also used the Leopard 1's exhaust system with fresh air admixture to reduce the infrared signature. The decision to use the Leopard 1 chassis meant the Gepard would have the edge on the battlefield by allowing it to keep up with armored formations more easily. When it came to firepower, the Gepard was also a step up from the duster. Its two 35mm Ehrlichan GDF autocannons were capable of pumping out up to 1,100 rounds a minute between them, a vast improvement over the 240 rounds a minute offered by the duster's 40mm Beaufort guns. What's more, boasting up to 90 degrees of elevation, the guns were equally adept at taking down enemy drones flying overhead as they were at engaging targets on the ground. Where the duster had primarily relied on optical tracking systems, the Gepard was one of the first spags to feature a sophisticated, fully integrated radar and fire control system. The Siemens MPDR-12 S-band radar provided a 15-kilometer hemispherical detection range and significantly enhanced the Gepard's target acquisition and tracking capabilities, making it more effective in detecting and engaging aircraft and other aerial threats. The Gepard also represented an optimization of manpower. The duster had needed a crew of four to six, but the new SPAG required only three soldiers to operate it, a commander to lead the unit into battle, a driver to carefully get it in position, and a gunner to unleash hell on the enemy. By September 1973, the first order of 420 units had been received. It was first deployed by the Bundeswehr in 1976, while the Belgian and Dutch armies also purchased units later in the same decade. 
with the Dutch version, containing a Philips radar system with a bar-shaped search radar, offering a higher image resolution than the standard trough-shaped Siemens model found on the original West German version. Cold War relations gradually improved during the late 1960s and 70s due to both sides pursuing a policy known as détente, characterized by increased communication and a greater joint commitment to keeping the peace. This situation quickly changed after the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in 1979, leading to the United States boycott of the 1980 Olympic Games in Moscow. With tensions escalating further after the vehemently anti-Soviet Ronald Reagan became U.S. President later that year, the Cold War was once again at risk of heating up. Western European nations prepared their guppies for battle, coupling them with manned portable air defense systems, often abbreviated to man pads, such as the Red Eye and the Stinger, capitalizing on their remarkable long-range scanning capabilities. However, direct military confrontation was ultimately averted. With the collapse of the USSR in 1991 officially signaling the end of hostilities, it seemed the West German SPAG would never be put to the test on the battlefield. With newer anti-aircraft systems being developed, the Gepard was gradually retired from service in Europe. The Bundeswehr phased it out completely by 2010, replacing it with the more effective Vizel II Ocelot with four FIM-92 Stinger or LFKNG missile launchers. No longer considered useful, the old Gepards were either sold off to developing countries such as Chile and Jordan, or consigned to gather dust in storage. But it wouldn't be long before it was given a second lease on life in a new conflict casting a shadow over Europe. On February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded neighboring Ukraine. By September of that same year, they had acquired and then replicated the Iranian Shahed-136 loitering munition, known as a kamikaze drone, because it's typically loaded with explosives and sent crashing into its targets. The Russians were thrilled with the potential damage these weapons could cause to Ukrainian infrastructure, but they hadn't counted on their opponents having a new addition to their arsenal, too. The German government had recently given Ukraine a batch of Flakpanzer Kapads, repurchased from Qatar after previously selling them to the Middle Eastern nation in December 2020. The robust Cold War spags moment to show the Russians what it was made of had finally come. Although they were built around half a century earlier, the Gepard's simple design has turned out to be remarkably effective. With pinpoint accuracy, kamikaze drones and other low-flying missiles launched by the invading Russian forces are ruthlessly eliminated one by one in mid-air before they have a chance to get anywhere near their intended targets, as the Kapal creates an impenetrable shield over Ukrainian strategic positions. Seeing this fierce and relentless monster in action on the battlefield, it's little wonder the Ukrainians compare it to a fire-breathing dragon. Another advantage of the Gepard is that it's proved to be a far more cost-effective air defense system than more advanced and expensive options, such as NASAMs or IRIS-T missiles. The success of these anti-aircraft systems comes in spite of the lack of training provided to the soldiers operating them. As the urgency of the situation has required the units to be rushed to the front line almost immediately, the Gepard's three-man crews have been receiving a mere two months of combat preparation, a much shorter period than the German standard of 18 months. Nevertheless, tales of their impressive achievements abound. One particularly notable example comes from the Odessa area, where one crew was reported to have taken out 10 Shahed drones and two cruise missiles in a single day. As the war rages on, the Gepard will likely continue to cause headaches for the Russians, as it audaciously scuppers their invasion plans one downed drone at a time. Once seemingly consigned to the history books, the unlikely resurrection of this rugged Cold War fighting machine shows that it's far too soon to write it off just yet.